Amen. And this morning, uh, our first session uh, will be held out and led out by uh, the executive pastor here at uh, Ramp Church, Texas, uh, Pastor Kasha Hunt. Would you give her a hand as she comes at this time? In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Listen, I am so excited and honored uh, to have this opportunity this morning to talk to you about secession planning. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're going to talk a little bit about secession development. Let's make something good. Amen. And so we can go ahead and go to the next slide because I want to explain to you what succession planning is. And it is a strategy for passing on leadership roles to the next leader. Amen. Also known as replacement planning, it ensures that ministries continue to run smoothly after ministries, um, after a ministry's most important people move on to new roles, retire, or God forbid, pass away. Amen. And so I just want to take a census in the room right now. If you are already secession, secession planning and have designated your successor, amen, I want you to raise your hand. My God from Zion, hallelujah. So let's talk a little bit about why we need it. Amen. Next slide, hallelujah. If I just had the clicker, I could work my own thing, hallelujah. Um, why do we need it? God bless you. We need it because churches are often the victim of a failure to plan. Amen. And, and I think that that mentality comes from uh, not treating the church as a business. Amen. Because God's business, come on here, is church business. Amen. And so if you had a corporation, you would plan more for that corporation. You would have all kind of policies and procedures in place to ensure that the company runs smooth. You would have... Uh, strategies, you would have plans, you would have ways that you're checking to make sure you're successful, but unfortunately in the body of Christ, we fail to develop those measures, we fail to develop those policies, those procedures, and so sometimes in the body of Christ, we fail to plan, and we all know that a plan to fail, or failure to plan is a plan to fail, amen? And so organizations use succession planning to prepare for inevitable transitions. And I think it's important that we put a note and a pen right there because um, I know when I grew up in church, amen, the deacons was always the deacons like from when I was born. They was a deacon when I, when I left. Come on here. The, the church mother, the, the women's leader, the men's leader, I mean, these were lifetime positions. Amen. But we as a body of Christ have to learn how to transition. Amen. Because that is what stagnates growth. Hallelujah. And so just because I may have the oil on me for this year to be the women's leader. Amen. God may send somebody next year that is, is, is just as oily or more oily and assigned for where the men, women's ministry is going. Amen. And so we have to be able to transition in the body of Christ. And those of us in here that are leaders, we have to have the mindset that I may not always be over this. And it's okay, amen? It doesn't mean I'm a failure. It doesn't mean I'm not successful. It just means that my time is up, amen? And even as pastors, you have to have a succession plan, amen? Glory to God. And so organizations are succession planning to prepare for inevitable transitions. Take me to the next slide. <laughs> Nobody's up there. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, she got me, Pastor. All right, glory to God. And so now we're moving on five steps to successful succession planning. Amen. And so it's imperative that we understand the first step is we have to make it a priority. And, and I know for those of you that operate in ministry and serve in ministry, it's already so much going on. It's like now there's something else I got to add to my plate. But we have to make it a priority. Why? Because the first step is we need to realize how important it is. 
And for those of you that are uh, in leadership positions, you know how someone transitioning from the church can affect the ministry, especially if they're in a position of, uh, of importance, amen. And sometimes people transition and don't even give you a 30-day notice. Sometimes people transition, they won't even just show up and you never see them again. And so we have to plan for that. We've got a plan for that, and that, that responsibility does not lay on the pastor. It lays on you as a leader to find your successor, amen? We all should be trying to replicate ourselves. I tell myself all the time, if I had three of me, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, my God, the works, <laughs> the wonders, hallelujah. And so what we have to do is we have to replicate ourselves. And so if you say, oh, my God, I'm an amazing uh, praise and worship singer, hallelujah. So now I must find another praise and worship leader to raise up to take my place in case God elevates me. If you say, I'm an amazing dancer, amen, hallelujah. Now I must find out who can I raise up to be a dancer like me. Amen. We've got to cultivate. We have to groom. We have to build. Amen. God did not give us all of these giftings and these anointings for us to just walk around and say, I'm gifted and anointed. But he gave it to us so that we can impart. Somebody say impartation. Amen. So here it says, focus on identifying good candidates for higher levels of responsibilities. So what does that mean? It may be somebody in your church that is sitting on a pew that has all the gifts and talents that are needed to fill a position, but because we don't talk to them, because we don't uh, have fellowship, because we don't communicate, we will never know the gift that's sitting right next to us. And so as leaders, as laymen, it is our responsibility to reach out. Amen. Hallelujah. So then it says incorporate into your strategies and ministry planning. So that means when you're sitting up every year and you're developing your plan and your strategies for the next year or you're developing your plan for ministries, you need to incorporate succession planning in your plan. Amen. Step two, devote time to planning. And um, this, is, this is so imperative uh, that we devote time to planning because um, the days are past for just throwing stuff together. Huh? The days are past for just showing up and figuring it out when you get there. But God is calling us to a level of, of planning because he's a planner. He's an intentional God. Come on here. He knows the ending from the beginning. We show up at the beginning like, what are we doing? We got to work that thing from the ending to the beginning, just like our father. So it says time has to be allocated to ensure the ministry is ready for a leadership transition. Amen? And so it's okay to get in your leadership and made, meeting and say, who's your successor? Who's your successor? And if they don't have one, you need to challenge them to find someone that they can Build up and grow to transition. It says conversations should focus on asking the questions, who, what, and when? Who can take my place? What are their qualifications? And when can they take my place? Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things that we incorporated here recently was terms for our leadership positions. And that's to ensure that we always stay fresh. Amen. Hallelujah, because some things can get stale. And, and some people feel like I need to, we, if we, okay, I'll, I'll put it this way. It's something my grandmother taught me uh, when I was 18 years old, and it stuck with me all this time. She says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always be what you've always been. Amen. And so sometimes we don't experience growth in our life because we're not doing nothing different. We don't experience growth in the ministry because we're not doing nothing different. Amen? And so we've got to do something different to get different results. And so the conversations now have to generate on asking the questions, who, what, and when. Who is demonstrating the potential? What type of development do they need? When is the optimal time frame for their readiness? Amen? Step three. Utilize a succession planning guide, amen? And that's something that you could create on your own or you could Google succession planning guide. I'm going to give you an example here shortly. But once candidates for future leadership opportunities have been identified, amen, plan, plan. 
Because the truth is, is that when you came and you were put in that position, you weren't everything that was needed at that time. But because of the press, because of what the, your pastor was pulling out of you, because of what God was pulling out of you, you became what you are. Amen. And so you've got a plan now how to pull that out of the individuals that you have identified. And so you want to use your information to create a detailed and specific development plan to ensure potential leaders, hallelujah, are ready to transition when a change in leadership is necessary. And so succession planning is not only for people that know they're going to transition, but succession planning is for people that know that in any moment, hallelujah, God could call me higher at any moment. God could transition me out of this position. And so because I know that I don't know everything, I don't know the, you know, I know God has plans for me, but I, I don't know all the plans. Amen. No matter how many prophecies I've received, no matter how many words and Rima words I've read in the Bible, I don't know what all God has planned for me. Amen. And so now I have to be prepared. Amen. If I'm a photographer for the ministry, I need to be raising up the next photographer to take my place in case I'm called to preach. Huh? Hallelujah, Sister Selena. So you want to use your information <laughs> to create a detailed and specific development plan. And, and we have to get away from ambiguity, amen, from just, just throwing stuff out there but not really having a specific structure and a specific plan. I was saying if it's okay for me to release this, Pastor, our year for this, our word for this year from the Lord is rebuilding for the future. Amen. And the Lord is challenging us to now place structure, hallelujah, in areas that may not have been so structured. He's calling us to create standard operating procedures. He's calling us to put policies and procedures in place. Hallelujah. And so uh, there's another level to this. Somebody say another level. Amen. And so we have to now work on the foundational things. Amen. Come on, take us back to the foundation, Lord. Hallelujah. So when I first loved you, when I first knew you, oh, God, I bless you. So let's go to step three, step four. So step four says create a development process. So now you've got to identify skills and aptitudes. Okay. What do they act to do? Amen. Because it's not just enough to have skills. Amen. Come on, we know that skills pay the bills, but it's not enough to just have skills in ministry. You might be a great secretary at work, but you can't just be just have some admin skills and be the church secretary here. Come on, there needs to be some oil. There needs to be some aptitude. You got to be apt to act a certain way. You got to have your behaviors under control. Come on, controlling your emotions. There's a lot of skills and aptitudes that you need to identify. And the only way you can identify those is you're going to have to cultivate. Amen. You know, when you go to a farmer, they know their dirt. They know their land. They know what will grow in it. They know what won't grow in it. They know what it does in the winter, the summer, the spring, and fall. Why? Because they spend time with it. Amen. And so you have got to now spend time with the person that you have identified as your successor. And then if the position requires public speaking, they may need development in that competency. Amen. And so then what you do is create opportunities for them to speak publicly. Even if it's present to me. Huh? So hold conversations to help identify potential talent. Discuss their strengths, their weaknesses, their skills, their experience, and even their developmental needs. Amen. Because not all of us are fully developed. It says increase their responsibilities and mentor them. And I think even, Pastor, you've spoken to this, is that sometimes as an African-American church, we fail in discipleship, which is really mentorship. Amen? And so we have got to get into a place where we are now mentoring, cultivating, developing new believers, developing potential leaders. Amen? And then it says create a performance evaluation to monitor improvement. And so if you say that this person needs to work on their handwriting, then you create opportunities for them to write stuff with their hand. I don't know how I can make it much clearer. Amen. And then after a certain amount of time, you assess where they are with their handwriting to evaluate whether what you're doing is working. Maybe they need a handwriting class. Amen. Let's move, sis. So this is a sample performance summary. 
So you've got your overall performance summary, which uh, indicates recent performance, including major accomplishments or performance issues. And so this is what we talked about, about the details, amen? You have to have an overall performance summary performance summary, but then also you need to identify their key strengths. What are they strong at? Uh, what are their professional competencies? What's their knowledge? Amen. And then you need to look at their developmental needs, uh, indicate their key experiences, their skills, or the knowledge the person lacks to move to the next level. And then you want to look at their development actions. You want to list, you want to create new responsibilities to be assigned projects or special assignments and or training as recommended, amen? And then you wanna look at their potential for promotion, which indicates this person's readiness to be promoted and the anticipated readiness date. Now, how many of you know that whatever you don't put an end date on, it may not get done? So when we are giving assignments, we need to say, I need this by. I need you to work on this and I need to see improvement by. So we have to give deadlines, amen? Or otherwise, we will never get Further, we will constantly be re moving the line, moving the line, moving the line. So we got to look at their potential for promotion and, and give an anticipated readiness date. And then it says recommended next position. So you want to list what the next assignment uh, that would most benefit the individual in his or her development. Amen. Step number five, you want to develop a structured transition plan. And so it's not enough to just develop who your, to, to uh, identify who your successor is, but now you gotta figure it out what does that transition look like? How, how, how is that changing of the guard going to take place? And so you gotta plan for that, amen? So it says transitioning leadership can be a challenge if there is no plan. And so now not only are you developing your succession plan, but now you need to develop a transition plan. What's this going to look like? How are we going to roll this out? Just like when you have an event, amen, a major event, you come up with a marketing plan. You come up with a, a strategy, amen, and usually there's a rollout. We're going to put this flyer out there first, let people know, hey, this is coming. Then we're going to drop this video, and then we're going to put this uh, uh, demonstration out there, and then we're going to have a pre-anniversary, and then we're going to show up, and everybody's going to show up for the big anniversary. So it's a, it's a plan that has to be in place for that transition. So it's not just dropped on the people like, hey, this your new leader. You want to spend the time to create processes and implement procedures in your ministry, amen, uh, so that tangible information can be handed down to assist them in a smoother process. Hallelujah. So this is an example of a readiness level chart. And it's very simple. The first one lets you know what is the key position title. Okay, so this title is the men's ministry leader. And the current person, the incumbent name, is Antoine Jackson. So Brother Jackson, he's serving as the men's leader. Amen. But Brother Jackson has now identified that, look, in January 2025, the Lord is moving me to missions. And I'm going to be going from Italy to Spain to Africa. And so I'm going to be leaving in 2025. So this is the person I recommend to take my place. Jamie Callies, amen? And I anticipate that with the mentorship plan and the transition plan and succession plan, I have that Jamie's gonna be ready January 2024. So you always want to make sure that your succession plan includes you still being present when the new leader takes place, amen? Because, hallelujah, because what this does, it is allows you to continue to mentor him for a year as he stands in that position. So it's not like this is you, you good, you on your own, peace, I'm out of here, I'm gone. No, that's a scary place to be. I Amen, mean, I don't care how much training you do, huh? And so next, next slide, please. So you want to keep the plan current, amen? So just like your bylaws, just like your uh, ministry protocols, your SOPs, they have to be kept current because what worked in 1985 is not going to work in 2022. So you have to constantly revise and revamp this succession plan. So you want to develop a recurring time frame for reviewing the plan. And, and I petition you to develop that recurring time frame for every plan and policy you have for your ministry. 
amen, to say, you know what, every two years, let's review our bylaws. Every two years, let's review these leadership positions, amen. And so whether it's semi-annually or annually, you've got to review your plan because things change. Somebody say things change. So you want to determine the effectiveness of the existing plan. And so this is what you would call a checkup, all right? You know, ain't nothing wrong with our teeth. It's not hurting. There's not nothing going on in our mouth, but we still got to go to the dentist for a checkup because he may identify something we don't see. So when we review this plan semi-annually or annually, we may say, you know what, this is not even working. I need to change this. I need to switch this up. Determine whether the current plan still meets the organizational objectives. And, and I know this is crazy because um, we believe that um, our mission and our vision does not change. We believe that uh, a lot of things that we put in place organizationally does not change. But the truth is, is that as we change, as the ministry changes, there is a need to change. Amen? And so we need to determine whether the current plan still meets the needs of the organization. Amen? And that's even for a great example is pre-COVID, we was all in church. Then during COVID, we was all at home. So now we got to review our whole policies and procedures for media. Why? Because we're not in person. Determine whether the candidates have changed. Huh? Because people change. Their objectives change. I mean, I'm sure y'all have witnessed people that was on fire for God, and then all of a sudden, they done slid back into the world. They're smoking, drinking. You've got to review that. Have they changed? And then you got to make necessary adjustments in the plan. And that adjustment could be identifying another successor. That adjustment could be pulling them in by their coattail and saying, hey, this is what we're doing, but if this is no longer your desire, then just let me know. And then we've got to assess and develop new candidates. Amen? So these are five common mistakes to avoid when it comes to succession planning. Number one, don't play favorites. Um, you know, sometimes in church we can be a little cliquish and we tend to lean towards the people in our group because we know them the best. And so we play favorites because I know this group right here. I'm going to choose from this group my successor. No, you can't play favorites. Then we make a mistake of failing to have a process for spotting successors. What's my, what's my plan for spotting them? How, how do I identify my successor? Well, you've got to come up with a plan of what that identifi identification looks like. Then we have a failure to address disappointment. You know why? Because we are human, and we disappoint each other all the time. We disappoint God. We disappoint our families. And so you've got to be able to address disappointment. You've got to, you've got to be able to, to develop somebody for six months, and they walk away. You've got to address the disappointment. And then don't turn the process into a co competition. Now, here at RCT, we are very competitive. Huh? You hear pastor calling people out about volleyball, basketball, and everything else, but within the ministry. Huh? We are very competitive, but you cannot turn this succession plan into a competition. It's, it's, it's not a competition. It's not who finishes first and who's the fastest. Come on here. And then you got to keep the succession planning process a secret. You know, it's not, it's not something you go out and say, yeah, my next leader is woo-woo. Because then all of a sudden now there's dissension against woo-woo. And you, you're causing all kind of warfare against woo-woo, and woo-woo may not even be the one. Next slide. Thank you. Hallelujah. So do we have... <laughs> Hallelujah. And so at this time, do we have any questions, amen, regarding succession planning or succession development? Amen. Well, the fact that there are no questions lets me know I did my job. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... I kind of flew through there a little bit, Pastor, so okay, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening.